which the early town full blah, 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 third book in the quiz quiz Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with another NetGalley TBR shelf video. I did this back in May 2021, but since then I have completed all but three of the books that I talked about in that video and I have acquired eight more so I figured I would talk to you guys about those eight that I have not talked to you guys about. So without further ado, let us get started. Oh. Just for like a fun little like stats kind of thing, I have been approved for a total of 109 books on my NetGalley, but I have only reviewed 95 of them. So I have a ratio of 87%, but I'm trying to get it to 100%, so this is like my get your shit together, Jayanne video, and hopefully I read the three that are staring at me right over there. But I figured I would share with you guys the eight that I haven't talked about yet. I actually have four of them in physical copy, which means that I am very far behind because three of them are actually finished copies of those e-arcs that the publisher sent me, and one is actually just a physical copy that they also sent me. But I am very thankful for it, but I figured I should, you know, read these and the three that are standing over there. So the first one I'll talk about is the one that I'm actually currently reading. It is called The Therapist by B.A. Paris. This is probably one of the ones that I am the most excited about because I just really enjoy B.A. Paris is writing. I have read all but one of their books. I own all but one of their books, which is why I haven't read it yet. But this one is a domestic thriller. She mainly writes domestic thrillers. I think that they would be categorized as that. I don't know if that's actually true. But this one follows a woman named Alice and her husband Leo who move into a closed off neighborhood. It's like a gated community. And they move into this house where a therapist used to live. And there's like a mystery behind what happened to this therapist. I'm thinking that they got murdered, but I don't actually know if that's true. So Alice becomes obsessed with finding out what happened to this therapist, but none of her neighbors want to talk about it. So it's like the story of that. I'm only seven chapters in, so I'm not very far in it, but it is less than 300 pages. So I feel like I'm going to fly through it. But so far in those seven chapters, I'm hooked, I'm into it. So I'm excited to continue and see what's up with this therapist and what happened to her. Next up is The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin and I was so excited when this showed up at my door solely because like can you look at it naked? It is the most gorgeous book I have ever seen in my entire life when the dust jacket is off but it also sounds really cool as well. The book follows a woman named Clara who is an ever witch which basically means that you control the climate based off of the season you were born into but Clara is a rare breed who is able to control the climate during all seasons. So it follows Clara throughout the four seasons as her magic is changing and things are happening. At the beginning she wants nothing to do with her magic because she feels that it is too volatile and she is losing too many people, but by the fourth season she kind of steps into her powers and discovers that she is the only one that is going to be able to save the world. I personally love witches books so I am very excited for this one. I also am just in love with the book aesthetic in general. So I'm very excited to finally pick this one up because it has been sitting on my shelves since it's come in and I've just been waiting for like the perfect mood to read it, which I sadly think I probably will wait until October to read this just because, you know, witches, spooky vibes, you know? And then but. the next book that I have on my TBR shelf is My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. This is the author of The Only Good Indians, which had like raving reviews, so I'm very excited to have this in my hands. I did not read that book, but like I said, everybody seemed to give it like 4.5 to 5 stars. This follows a 17 year old named Jade who lives in Idaho. She is half Indian. There are many tourists that come and visit the lake that she lives on and that's when these tourists begin to go missing and Jade is convinced that there is a serial killer on the loose. I honestly have no idea if it is the story of like her helping detectives try to capture this killer or 
or something else. I don't know, but I'm definitely invested in finding out what it is, and I think that it's going to be a really good one, especially during, you know, October vibes and the spooky season, so I'll probably end up saving it for that. And this then the I final book that I have as, like, a physical copy of is the sequel to Goddess in the Machine. It is The Devil in the Device. This is by Laura Beth Johnson, and I gave The Goddess in the Machine four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it, so when Penguin reached out to me and asked me if I wanted a copy of the sequel, I was like, heck yes I do, I need to know what happens in the story. The first book followed Andromeda, who was put into a cyrogenetic stasis, and she was told that she would wake up a hundred years into the future to help colonize the new planet, but then she ends up waking up a thousand years into the future, and life as she knows it has drastically changed, not to mention everybody is calling her a goddess, so she is very confused, and so she turns to the help of a bastard prince named Zaid, who is on this cover, and she's hoping that he will help her get out of this mess, and it's like the story of that. So this is the sequel. I'm very excited to see where the story has progressed since the first book, but like I said, I gave it a four out of five stars, so I think that this one is going to be a lot of fun as well, and I am very excited about Okay, it. and then I also have four books that I don't actually have physical copies of, so that I have them on eARC or audiobook. The first one I have is Sisters of the Snake. This is by Serena and Sasha Nanua. I've actually met these two at a HCC Frenzy Presents thing in Toronto. They're both super sweet and I'm so excited that they are now published authors. That is so, so exciting for them. I'm not 100% sure if this is accurate, but it gives me Princess and the Popper vibes, so I'm not 100% sure if it's like a retelling or like loosely based off of that story, but it follows two girls who are very different from one another. One is a royal princess while the other is a street urchin, an orphan, and when their two worlds collide, they discover that they are identical. So they decide that they are going to switch places, and it's like the story of that. There's a lot of deadly magic, which I am here for, and I just think that it sounds like a super epic fantasy adventure. I actually have this on audiobook from my library, which I will be listening to, but I have an eARC as well that I can follow along with if I want to, but I just think that this one sounds really fun, and the fact that I've met the authors just makes it so much better because, like I said, I am so happy for them and it's so, so exciting. The next book that I have is another one that I have as an eARC, but I also have it reserved at the library on audiobook, but it is That Weekend by Kara Thomas. This follows three girls who had planned the perfect prom weekend getaway, but when they go on this getaway, one of the girls, Claire, wakes up completely full of blood on this hiking trail with no recollection of the last 48 hours. So three girls went up this mountain, but one came back. Everyone is looking for Claire for answers. She has none. What the heck happened to her two other friends? And it's like the story of that, trying to piece it all together. I don't know if it's like a thriller, a horror, a what, but I am so ready for it. I own two of Kara Thomas's books, but I don't believe I've actually ever read one. So that's a problem that we are going to eliminate when I read this one. Next up is another one. I have an audiobook, but also have an e of, but it is Small Favors by Erin A. Craig. I was originally interested in this because Erin A. Craig wrote A House of Salt and Sorrows, which I really enjoyed, so I just want to see more of their writing because I think it's spooky and atmospheric and right up my alley, but this one follows a girl named Ellery who lives in a town up in the mountains called Amity Falls. This town is surrounded by an almost impenetrable forest, which the early townsfolk were said to have fought off the devils that were in this forest. Visitors to this town are very few and far between, so when a hunting party goes missing, people start to say that the monsters and devils in the forest are back. So as fall turns to winter, more mysterious and strange things start happening in this town, and people begin to point fingers towards a mystical creature 
character or tribe that say that they will grant the villagers deepest darkest wishes no matter how impossible they seem in exchange for a small favor. So Ellery finds herself in a position where she needs to ask for one of these favors but she discovers that the creature's intentions are a lot more sinister than she thought so she finds herself in a race against time to save her family and those she loves from whatever it is that is happening. I don't know what it is because the synopsis doesn't tell you, but I, like I said, am mostly intrigued by this because of the author and I think that it sounds really good. I haven't heard anybody really talk about it other than to say that they are excited about it, so I share that sentiment and I'm excited to dive in as soon as possible. And then the final book that I have for this TBR NetGalley shelf video is The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. This is the third book in the Kiss Quotient companion series. This one follows Kuang, who is Kai's brother from The Bride Test. So this is his love story, which I absolutely loved him in The Bride Test, so I'm so excited that he gets his own story. This is one that I have on audiobook from NetGalley, so I'm very, very excited to read it because I love The Kiss Quotient and The Bride Test so much. So I'm hoping that my love for the series continues in this one but I just think that it is so cute and I'm hoping that we get another Stella and Michael cameo. I'll take a Kai and Esme cameo as well but Stella and Michael hold a special place in my heart so I just I need more of them in my life so I'm very excited about this one. Probably the most excited about this one I'm not gonna lie. Alright everybody, so those are the books that I need to read on my neck alley shelf to get it to 100%. It's gonna happen. I, I feel it in my heart and soul that I'm going to be able to do this. Yell at me in the comments that I need to read these books and not other books, okay? Let me know down below if by the time you see this video you have <laughs> read these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!